hi everyone in my last video i explained what constraints are okay i made you to realize that constraints are specified rules or restrictions that you imposed on a column in a table and it helps you to determine if a data is valid for a particular column right it also helps you to maintain the reliability accuracy and integrity of the data that you stored in our uh, in your database okay and then we went further to look at the common examples of constraints and then i was able to explain to you what not null constraint is and also we looked at check constraints okay and previously i've also explained to you what primary key and foreign key are okay today we are going to be looking at unique constraints and default constraint okay now let us go to pg admin and let us understand what unique constraints is so for unique constraints what does it do a unique constraint ensures that all the values in your column are unique it helps you to avoid duplicate okay so unique constraint is used when we want each value of a particular column to be unique it helps you to uniquely identify any row or record of a particular table okay now how do we create unique columns in our table let us take a look at an example right here okay now i have a database which i have created right here student underscore test underscore one okay i've showed this to you in my previous video so if i write if i um so if i open up this then i go to schemas then i go to tables right now i have four tables right here okay so if i right click that then i go to query tool so this is going to open this for me okay now how do we create table that has a unique key so let me copy this and paste it right here for you guys and then explain now look at what we're having right here i'm saying create table if not exist student table five i've explained to you what all this means i've explained to you previously okay here we are creating table so here i'm saying that i want to create a table called student underscore table underscore five i want a column called student id f name which is first name age email tuition paid and i'm giving them this data type integer varka which maximum length is 180 integer varka that's variable character maximum length is 180 then tuition paid is numeric right here okay now what i'm doing right here is i'm giving this a constraint of unique so what that means is that for every record this student id needs to be unique that means that we should we, we there will be no repetition of any student id okay remember that i've also explained to you what not what not not is so f name that's first name i'm giving it a constraint of not null but in this video our concentration is on this unique okay so let's focus on this unique so student id needs to be unique okay now let us run this uh statement right here this query right statement right here execute very good this has created table for us if we come right here and then refresh we should see it very good you can see we have student underscore table underscore five so now we have created this table now let us try to insert into this table okay i will copy this right here now we want to insert into this table remember that we had given this student id a constraint of unique that means that student id should not be repeated okay so let us give let us do insert into student underscore table underscore five that's this table okay and these are the columns remember when you are the order that you have this column should also be the order that you are going to have these values so we have student id one f name john 
age is 31 email address is this and then the tuition paid is this so i'm going to highlight this to run only these two lines i will execute you can see it tells me that the query returns successfully that means i'm able to insert successfully okay let us take a look at what we have inserted let us take a look now if i run this select statement right here very good you can see guys that we were able to insert our first row okay what about if we insert a second row which i change the student id to two okay so if i run this right here it has run successfully and if i do this select statement what do i get you can see that i have second row right because we said a student id needs to be unique but what about if i run this again if i run this insert statement again i want to insert this same record inside that means that this student id i'm not changing it it is still at two if i right click this i mean if i highlight that and execute you can see what happened here guys you can see that i have an error it says duplicate key value value val violates unique constraints it says it says key student id equals to two already exists you see that guys if i change this to one and let us let us try to insert you see it says student id equals to one already exists can you see that guys that that is how unique uh, constraint works let me go ahead and change this to three let's see if we can insert remember we do not have student id three before so this should be able to insert successfully let us execute you can see this return successfully if i highlight this and run it very good you can see that this run successfully and that is what unique key does it helps you to ensure that you don't have duplicates in your table okay it helps to ensure that each value of a color is unique that's whatever uh key whatever column that you have assigned that unique constraint we could also have unique constraint on two or more columns i could have unique also right here in let's say email i could say email also should be unique okay so let me create another table here let me just call it six let me do this let me call it six let me do this i call it six okay let me let, let us do this let us create this table execute we have said we have created successfully let us insert this record you see we have inserted let us select you see we have been we have selected but then now let me let me change this student id to two but this email let me retain it as this same email and let us let us try to insert if i if i like that and do this and execute you see that i have an error it says email at domain.com already exists i hope you guys understand this right now i hope you understand what unique constraint is right now very good guys so the next one we are going to be going into right now is what we call i'm going to delete this is what we call default is what we call default okay so what does default do default constraint is used whenever you want to set default values to a particular column when no value is specified that means that when you want to insert record into a particular row or your table and you do not specify a value for a particular column what will happen is that the default value that you have already specified when you created the column is what is going to be automatically inserted what do we mean by this i think an example we better drive home the point right here so let us copy and paste this thing right here so let us say we have student underscore table underscore seven this is the table we want to create okay now we have our same uh we have student id first name age email tuition paid which is numeric 
but we set this default to 15,000. And what this means is that whenever we did not specify the, the value for this column, we are saying that just assign 15,000 to it, okay? First of all, let us create this table, okay? I would execute. You can see it says table as has, has been created, okay? Now, if you want to specify, if you want to confirm, I can refresh this and you can see right here, student table underscore seven, student underscore table underscore seven. Now, let us insert a record inside this table okay so now student id i'm making it one f name john h 31 email email at domain.com then tuition paid three thousand if you look at this one this particular one i have specified what value this tuition paid should be i've specified it to be thirty thousand therefore when i insert this thirty thousand is going to go in now this has inserted successfully let us check what value we have inside let us do a select star statement and execute you can see here guys we have thirty thousand right here why because in our tuition paid we assigned thirty thousand to it okay but what about if we decide to remove this tuition paid column and then we also remove this thirty thousand remember when we created this table we have specified a default remember you are going to put the default keyword we have specified default of fifteen thousand. so now that i want to insert into this table if i do not specify the column right here and also the amount that the tuition the student paid then what is going to be inserted automatically will be 15,000 because we have called it the default. Okay, so now let me insert this. I will say execute. You see, it inserted successfully. Normally, if we did not, if we did not have this to be a default and we did not specify that column right here, we would have gotten an error. But because this is a default, so Postgres SQL Server knows that if i don't put that table that column rather and the value i want it to be right here that everything will still be fine that it will just go ahead and put this fifteen thousand. let us verify that come to select let us highlight that and execute very good guys you can see that guys that this is fifteen thousand. so even though we did not specify what value we want to put for tuition paid we did not specify any value right here we did not specify the column neither do we did we specify the value right here yet we were able to insert a record for tuition paid why is that that is because when we created that table we had said that tuition paid the default value should be fifteen thousand. okay i hope you guys understand this right now it is very very important for you to understand the different constraints that is being used in, in in sql okay and now you have known a whole lot of constraints right now okay if you find this video valuable i highly encourage you to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell so that you can get notified whenever we release any of our videos and please don't forget to comment like and help us to share our video and i hope you guys understand what we have done today all right guys i will see you in the next class bye